Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's really lovely to be with you this morning on this lovely day. And I'm so thankful that I can spend time with you again this morning. And I just wanted to bring a little message to you this morning. Um, and, and it's amazing because the message just really quickened to me. And I've actually um, titled this message, It is well, it is well. Whatever my lot that thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And the words, those words came to me. And, you know, regardless of, our, of the season of our life we're in, regardless of that season, you know, whether, you know, physically speaking, if you look outside, you have the seasons, you have spring, summer, autumn and winter. And I was saying probably a while back ago that in all those seasons, different things happen, you know, uh, physically. You, you see different things, you know, different things are happening. And in our lives, we have seasons. And whatever season we may be in, we can still say these words. It is well, it is well with my soul. And God wants us to be able to do that. And I just want to this morning do something a little bit different. I just want to um, talk to you a little bit about somebody um, that I found out about that really touched my heart. So Horatio Spafford knew something about life's unexpected challenges. He was a successful attorney and a real estate investor who lost a fortune in the great Chicago fire of 1871. Around the same time, his beloved four-year-old son died of scarlet fever. Thinking a vacation would do his family some good, he sent his wife and four daughters on a ship to England, planning to join them after he finished some pressing business at home. However, while crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the ship was involved in a terrible collision and sunk. More than 200 people lost their lives, including all four of Horatio Spafford's precious daughters. So he didn't just lose his son of scarlet fever, he then lost his precious daughters. His wife, Anna, survived the tragedy. Upon arriving in England, she sent a telegram to her husband that began, Saved alone, what shall I do? Horatio immediately set sail for England. At one point during his voyage, the captain of the ship aware of the tragedy, tragedy that had struck the Spafford family, summoned Horatio to tell him that they were now passing over the spot where the shipwreck had occurred. As Horatio thought about his daughters, listen to this, listen to this, this made me, this almost this made me cry. As Horatio thought about his daughters, words of comfort. You see, he lost his son, he lost his son to scarlet fever. He lost his four daughters in, in the, the sea. And as he thought about his daughters, the words of, of comfort and hope filled his heart and mind. He wrote them down and they have since become a well-beloved hymn. I'm just reading out a few of the words here. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like seas billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. And that's what he wrote. Perhaps we can always say that everything is well in all aspects of our lives. There will always be storms to face and sometimes there will be tragedies. But with faith in the loving God and with trust in his divine help, we can confidently say it is well, it is well with my soul. And I just thought that was very moving. You know, despite going through all, all of those tragedies, all of that awfulness, he was able to then write a hymn and, and, and you know, and a, a hymn and the focus on God. And God gave him the strength and God gave him the power uh, to help his, him in his life. So <clears throat> I just wanted to say again this morning, regardless of, of, of our seasons, the seasons we're going through in our life, we can still be like this Horatio and, and say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And God teaches us, to find eternal peace in these times. Horatio was able to find peace and comfort and help from God because had he not, he wouldn't have been able to, to have carried on and done what he did. And so he, he's a real example of, of somebody who God um, took, took his life and used in, a, in an amazing way. And I just wanted to um, share some Bible passages, passages with you this morning. Um, I have got normally a, a few more than normal, but I just felt quickened that I should share these. And it's just in context with what I've, I've told you, um, you know, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. And the first passage um, is, is, you know, we're, we're talking about seasons, weren't we? There are lots of seasons. And this, this first passage is Ecclesiastes 3, and it's just down to verse 8. 
There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to, time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent, a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. And a time for war and a time for peace. And as we, I haven't got time to sort of like talk a lot about this today because, you know, there, I don't have lots of time. But as, as we look at this, it just says there is a time for everything. And, it, it, you know, even if we're close to God and even if we are walking with God and that we've got to have that relationship with, with him, there's still a time for all different things to happen. There's still a time. God has his hands upon our life and there's, there is a time for everything. So whatever season we're in, we can we can thank and praise God that it is well within our souls, that it, that it is well that we are that we want to thank and praise him for all the different things that he's doing in our lives. And then I, I did say to you a few minutes ago, God teaches us to find eternal peace in Jesus during these times. He teaches us and he wants to help us. But sometimes we don't actually get hold of it. We don't realise it. We don't take hold of it fully because sometimes we need a bit of encouragement and we need a bit of help um, you know, to, fight, to know how to find that peace. And I just want to share with you um, some passages this morning um, that came to me as I was you know, preparing uh, you know, this yesterday and, and this morning. John, um, John 14. John 14, 27, one little verse, John 14, 27 um, says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That's a wonderful promise, isn't it? We have, as the people of God, we have the legacy of peace. We have, we have and we know peace that the world doesn't know. The Lord's peace passes all understanding. It keeps our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We have that peace. And that's what this is saying. It's a gift from God. He wants to give us peace. And if, if we have disappointments, if sin tries to, you know, tries to creep in and we have disappointments, we can take comfort in Christ and we can take comfort in his peace, that he wants us to know that peace in our lives today. And then in another one in John 16, uh, John 16, 29 and 33. John 16, um, this is a little bit longer, 29 to 33. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figure of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. You believe at last, Jesus answered, but a, but a time is coming and has come when you will be scattered each to his own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father's with me. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. What, what, what a fantastic promise for us this morning. You know, what a, fan, what a fantastic, you know, it was, it was Christ's hour, you know, and, and, and there was that sense of loneliness, you know, um, but 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 the, the, God was with him. He knew the divine, his divine, the divine presence. God was with him, and even in the uncertainties, the Lord is saying, you know, that to take comfort, you know, take comfort in Christ, to know His peace. Yes, we might have tribulations, but He wants to give us His peace. He wants us to be cheerful, and He, he we are victorious in Christ. Christ is the victor. We are victorious in Christ, and even if I stutter. <laughs> We're victorious in Christ. Um, we are victorious in Christ. And he just wants us to take hold of the, the truth of that today. Amen. And so the next passage I'm going to read, I'm just um, scooting along here, is one in Romans 5.1. This is just a little short one. Romans 5.1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That, that's a wonderful, another wonderful verse. You know, we've been justified, we have faith, we have peace, and uh, it's a gift from Christ. So we can take hold of, you know, we're blessed in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. God has given us so much. We are so much in him. We have so much in him. And sometimes we don't realise it. It's like you've got a, you know, a, a hundred course meal or a thousand course meal. You know, you won't be able to eat it all. But gradually, as you start to go through each course, you will think, oh, I didn't realise that that soup tasted so good. Oh, I didn't realise that tasted so good. And it's like Christ has given us so much. 
but we don't we don't fully take hold of it because we don't always realize and my heart today is to just and in these days ahead is just to encourage you in the lord you know just in what god wants to say and do in our lives to encourage us and to help us and then the next one i've got is ephesians 2 ephesians chapter 2 14 and 15 ephesians chapter 2 14 and 15 for he himself is our peace who has made the two the two one and has destroyed the barrier the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations his purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two thus making peace now isn't that again it's another lovely promise and we, we know that we know that as we look at this this is talking about the jews and the gentiles one in christ that's what that you know that's what the, as we're coming down into passages it's one in about being one in christ um, and it, Jesus just wants to do that and, and he wants to bring peace. He wants to bring unity. It's talking about unity. All these rituals and laws and, and legalism, legalisms, you know, to be abolished because, you know, it, we're, we're living in, in, in that relationship with Jesus when we're free. We don't need to have a whole load of rules and regulations. It's, it's freedom that Christ has set us free. So let's just hold on to these truths this, today. I wish I had more time to, to expand on them, but I am I'm limited because of the... Um, the video time but anyway Colossians 3 15 Colossians 3 15 um, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since you are members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful you know God is calling us to peace you know not just the church but us individually he wants us to know his peace in our lives and he wants us to be thankful so as i'm just com coming back to how i started you know we can as, as god's people to say it is well it is well in within my soul despite what we're going through despite what's happening this like in this less than a year what's going on around us we can still say we can still say um like horatio spafford it is well, it is well within my soul. Lord, I do just want to, to pray for us today that we will be able to embrace the fullness of, of, of who you are and of your peace. And, and we will be able to, to say with all of our hearts, yes, it is well, it is well within my soul. And, and this man lost so much that I was speaking about this morning. And yet what did he do? He turned to you and he wrote in the most beautiful hymn, so, Lord, I pray that you would maybe we, we, some of us might even be able to listen to that hymn. I just pray, Father, that you would just touch our hearts and lives afresh. Give us peace. Give us hope. Give us confidence. Whatever it is we need, Lord God, I just thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. And I just thank you that the peace you give us, the world doesn't know. It, it's it's, an, it's a, a peace in our minds. It's a peace in our hearts. It's a peace in our lives. It seems to stop all of the, the busyness of the traffic that's going on outside. And I just pray, Father God, for that peace, for, for whoever needs, needs a touch of that today, uh, that you would just reach our hearts and minds and lives, Lord, I pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for listening this morning. And um, it might be worth listening to this message again if, if you get time, if you have missed it, because it is quite powerful. Um, you know, I just felt the Holy Spirit coming on me as I was getting it ready. Um, you know, so listen to it again if you can. I'm going to post it on. On, the, on my page and put it on YouTube and just be blessed. Thank you so much for the folks that are listening. I can see that you've been listening today and I'm sending you lots of love and I'll send you a message and I'll be on again tomorrow morning. But please, if you get a chance, listen to the message again, um, especially if you missed what I said about Horatio Spafford. Just listen to the message again. Sending you lots of love. Take care then. God bless. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you.